Welcome back. Baron B. Barnabas here to take you on a tour of our new exhibition. Today we're taking a journey through man's evolution and survival in the most diverse and luscious parts of the world, the rainforest. Man's relationship with these forests dates back to the dawn of our species, and to this day the inner reaches of the jungle remain unmapped and unexplored, at least to outsiders. An equatorial emerald green belt around our world, the rainforests are the lungs of the planet and the bedrock for our climactic stability. They are quite literally under attack and in decline. Some 50% of all forests have already been lost. This is the human conquest of the rainforests. Tropical rainforests cover about 6% of the world's landmass and are located primarily between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn at latitudes 23.5 north and 23.5 south. The largest rainforests are the Amazon of South America, the Congo River Basin in Africa, and the rainforests of Southeast Asia, with smaller rainforests found in Central America, Madagascar, the Pacific Islands, Northern Australia, India, and China. Consistent equatorial sun provides heat and sunlight 12 hours a day, 365 days a year. All of this regular heat supercharges the water cycle with increased evaporation and therefore increased rainfall, which plants love. Mixing together all this bountiful heat, water and foliage leads to the most biodiverse habitats on the planet, with half of all animal and plant life living there, including our closest living relatives. This brings us to the first item in our exhibition, this Australopithecus skull from 4 million years ago, thought to be the common ancestor of all Homo species, including our own Homo sapien. Now there is some debate whether Australopithecus was the first human ancestor to walk on two feet, but certainly by the time this species had evolved, it was the primary mode of travel. One of the prevailing theories why humans walk upright is the savannah hypothesis. Our human ancestors evolved in equatorial forests, perhaps not dissimilar from the tropical forests that remain around the Congo River Basin today. Due to climate change at the time, these lush forests turned into open savanna grasslands. As the environment changed over millennia, the food supply would become more widely dispersed, requiring our ancestors to travel further to gather resources, which is easier on two legs. Bipedal walking as an energy-saving measure was quite literally the first step on the evolutionary ladder for modern humans, and our first, but certainly not our last, interaction with tropical rainforests. Next in our exhibition we have a beautiful ceremonial headdress from the Quiapo peoples of the Amazon. Still living within the forest to this day, the Quiapo demonstrate the generally non-destructive, symbiotic relationship endemic amongst indigenous tribes. Using a combination of hunter-gatherer methods and small-scale shifting cultivation, the Quiapo are able to live sustainably within the forest, a balance that has been maintained for millennia. We now move on to one of the prides of our exhibition, the Mayan calendar. The Maya were one of the most successful pre-Columbian civilizations within Mesoamerica. Around the 9th century CE, their civilization collapsed rapidly. One of the leading theories for this is the Maya were cutting down the dense tropical jungle around them in order to replace it with agricultural land. While not directly leading to a drought, they are believed to have exacerbated dry conditions. Dense jungle forests are a dark shade of green, which absorbs lots of sunlight, retaining heat in the atmosphere, causing more water vapour to rise and thus more rain. Lighter green foliage, on the other hand, like that found in agriculture, does the opposite, reflecting light, cooling the atmosphere, and not allowing enough water vapour to rise and form precipitation. Now, the Maya did live in other parts of Mesoamerica up until the Spanish invasions, but one could argue this collapse during the 9th century was the civilization hitting the extinction threshold, the point at which a population exceeds the ability of the habitat it lives within to support it. Moving on in our tour, we have this bulldozer, the seemingly unstoppable march of modern civilization and globalization can be epitomized by the road. More than 50,000 kilometers of road were built through the Amazon rainforest between 2004 and 2007. Once a road is built, the area around it rapidly populates and industrializes. The space required comes at the expense of the forest, 
95% of the Amazon's deforestation happens within 25 kilometers of a road. The rainforest itself isn't just cut down for its timber. In the Amazon, illegal logging is fueled by the massive demand for Brazilian beef and the ever-increasing need for cattle pastures. And what do the cows eat? High-protein soybeans primarily. The cycle of forests being cleared for new cattle fields with old pasture land being converted to soy fields has increased the pressure on the Amazon rainforest. Although the rate of deforestation has generally been declining for years, in 2018 and 2019 it has begun to rise again as the legal penalties for illegal logging have been softened. The summer of 2019 saw much of the Amazon ablaze with thousands of wildfires many of which were illegally started by cattle farmers. Lastly in our exhibit, we have the Uncaria tomentosa vine, or cat's claw, used by indigenous populations to treat a variety of diseases such as inflammation or fevers. Some 25% of modern Western medicines are derived from rainforest plants, with only 5% of the Amazon plant species having been studied for the medicinal benefits. By destroying the rainforests, we may be inadvertently destroying an undiscovered cure. Now, one extra you can find within our museum is this bottle of palm oil. Palm oil is a digestible vegetable oil that comes from the fruit of oil palms. The cultivation of these palms comes at the expense primarily of rainforest habitat, and vast swathes of Borneo and the Southeast Asian rainforests have been bulldozed or set alight to make way for these monocrops creating endless horizons of these palm oil trees. Palm oil itself is used as an ingredient in a wide range of things, from soaps and shampoos, lip balm, bread, biofuel, chocolate, butter, and other foods. In fact, palm oil itself can be found in 50% of all processed foods. The average person on the planet consumes eight kilograms of palm oil every year. Now, one can argue it offers a greater yield with minimal production costs compared to other vegetable oils, but it comes at the expense of lush, diverse rainforest habitat. Rainforests are home to 50% of all land-based life, and half of the rainforests are already destroyed. At the current rate of deforestation, there will be no rainforests at all by the end of the century. The earth is finite, and far more delicate than we think. One scientific study hypothesizes that once the Amazon rainforest is 24% cut down, a figure it should reach within a decade, its canopy will no longer produce enough moisture to feed the rain clouds, precipitation will fall, and biodiversity and the ecosystem will be in freefall. This will trigger unpredictable flooding or water shortages and wildfires all across South America. The Amazon rainforest alone stores between 90 and 140 billion tons of carbon. By losing the rainforest, not only do we release this captured carbon into the atmosphere, but we inhibit the rainforest's ability to sequester additional carbon. A deadly spiral with global consequences, whether that's to our Arctic ice melting, which you can explore more in our other exhibition, or increased carbon in the oceans, which increases acidity and destroys coral reefs and other marine life. This horrorscape isn't anything anybody wants to see. This calamitous path that we're on has to be stopped. On paper, one kilometer square of palm oil plantation is worth more than one kilometer square of rich rainforest full of any number of the 1,500 bird species, 1,400 mammals, 450 reptiles, 1,500 amphibians, 2.5 million insects, or the 80,000 plant varieties found in the Amazon. Not to mention the untold medicinal and ecological discoveries, and the production of something we all need, oxygen. Certainly makes you think that modern economics doesn't really know the value of anything. Eventually something will give. We are not immune to gravity, and what goes up will come down. We're not apart from nature, we're a part of nature and we're no more immune to the extinction threshold than the Maya were in the 9th century. There are ways to fight back. We could rewild vast areas that have already been deforested. We could continue to protect more of the forests that remain, and actually enforce that protection. By all means, hug a tree. They need us, and we need them more than ever. 
Thank you so much for visiting the Barnabas exhibition on the human conquest of the rainforests. I do hope you've enjoyed your visit. Please feel free to visit any of our other exhibits before visiting the gift shop. Personally, I'm an optimist. Now, if only there was some technologically advanced solution to solve all this climate nonsense. One that could harness the renewable power of the sun and convert carbon dioxide into oxygen and capture excess carbon. Oh yeah, that's a tree. <laughs>